Oh, you know what? I actually didn't need to, you didn't need to comment this because it was in my head every hour of every fuck day. been a long week and a long day, but I'm excited about this. We have a special treat for you guys. Uh, Devin Eden came back, by the way. Okay, we've been getting a ton of feedback. Sorry, this is driving me nuts. We've been getting a ton of feedback from our Appalachian Trail video, and this is a comment we got a couple days ago from someone named Becca. Imagine sticking a child in a high chair for eight hours a day, not allowed out, not allowed run, no toys. Now stick that child outside and let him be cold or hot or snowed on or wet. Sticking Rainier in that fucking backpack all day, why you hike is fucking cruel. I don't care if he's allowed on for meals or an occasional walk, it's not enough. There's a lot of hate comments that we haven't really addressed on this vlog because I don't really care. This one's a little bit different. This is something we thought about all the time because Rainier's health and comfort were really important to us. And the trail, that was like one of the absolute hardest things mm -hmm. that we dealt with every single day, especially in the first weeks. We understand there's, it's not entirely natural to stick a child in a backpack for five months um, or eight hours a day. At least it wasn't natural for us. But one, we thought that there was something else that we were doing that made it worth it. And this is, I think, where people get a little confused. They think, oh, you did this because you just wanted to check this off your bucket list and feel like an adventuring man. And that's not true. That's not why we did the Appalachian Trail. I don't know if I could say at all, but that was like such a low motivator for me. We did the trail. I need to make sure this microphone. We did the trail because we believed it was the best thing for our family, including our two-year-old Rainier. Um, and the second thing that's a little uh, weird for me is I don't really consider like home life nowadays, the way we live it, <laughs> supernatural or healthy for children either. Mm -hmm. So for example, if we would have not done the trail and bought an iPad for Rainier and let him go on that whenever he wants, like to easy three, four, five, six hours a day, um, atrophying his brain, also atrophying his muscles. No one would think twice about that. You know, that would just be like, and in fact, even if we like didn't spend time with him, if we sent him to daycare, then we suck him on an iPad. Those are like accepted forms of neglect. And what we didn't do was neglect, it was like, painful um, at times. I mean, there was times where it was like, at least uncomfortable uh, for him and for us. I think like we wanted to do the Appalachian Trail, but it actually was a big sacrifice for, for our family, um, for all of us. I mean, we were pretty comfortable in our life. It took a lot of energy <laughs> to get on that trail. And if the only reason we were on there was for some bucket list, I don't think we would have gotten on there. Um, I think people do that, the bucket list thing, when it's just them. Like, or then maybe they're leaving their spouse at home, but that makes sense. But for us to do that for our bucket list thing, uh, we just had a lot going for us at home. To to leave that behind was was a big deal. When you have six kids at six different stages of life, 
I don't think you have the luxury to to ask the simple, in my mind, this, this person's making this so simple. What is it that Rainier needs right now? Let's do that. Well, always. Always. What about Dove, Eden, Seven, Memory, Philia? You know, maybe she would say, well, then you, sh you have too many kids, but that's a whole nother, you know, discussion. But I'm assuming she's coming from another world, which is fine. I mean, there's, there's something there, but this well, is our world. We also believe <clears throat> that the best thing we have to offer our children is not comfort. And I'm not against comfort. I just think oftentimes it's a sorry substitute for something that's actually way more fulfilling and valuable in the long run. I think like she has a point here because I actually ha felt that rub and that pain probably almost every single time we put him in that carrier, multiple times a day. Um, but what I feel like she doesn't address is all the good things that came from that trip that she probably doesn't know, you know? And she's, she's not even acknowledging, at least in this comment, which bugs me when people have such black and white comments like this, but. <clears throat> I mean, the reason why I'm addressing this comment specifically is I wanna acknowledge that this was a hard thing for us to, we didn't, we weren't confident on the trail, even after the trail, that this was like the best thing for our family. It was funny, even recently making the documentary, I think it gave our family a completely different angle on the trail and our story where we were like- It was happy. We were excited about it for one of the cool. first times. We thought about this stuff just like all the time and comfort was a factor, but it wasn't the only factor. And I think a lot of times with mm -hmm. people, they think, oh, if you're uncomfortable, something's wrong and something's bad. And it's like, no. The way comfort is being sold to us now, it's like a cure-all where we're like comfortably numb and all dying. We're like cut off from relationship. We're cut off from challenge and growth and health that comes from being not just in the outdoors, but in difficult situations. I think what's funny about this comment is this comment was actually a voice in my head every single day mm -hmm. on that trail, which is, interesting you know it's like oh you know what i actually didn't need to you didn't need to comment this because it was in my head every hour of every fuck day of that trail well there's something else that's going on here that i don't like and that is you know there's an assessment and there's a question like is this best for the kid and i think it's best to approach this question with some humility like we don't know of course if you're watching this on video you don't know i mean like you're only seeing 13 minutes of our day every day. Like how could you know what actually goes on? Um, so it's confusing. It's, it's like, let's ask this question. What's best for kids? Like how do we figure that out? Can we have a conversation and look at scientific data and, and, and our experience? And that's one of the things we're willing to do is to try and live a way that we don't see really lived out very often and put it out there because we have a hunch that what everyone is betting on now isn't really the best. Um, but I feel like there's something more than just like an opinion. There's like a judgment where she's looking down on us and saying, you guys are idiots. You're awful parents. Like you don't love your kid. I know it's best for your kid. And I just don't, I, I, if I wanted that kind of shit, I'd go back to churches where they're all confident that they have you figured out and the world figured out. They have out God figured out. And everyone else and you know, they're gonna tell you it that way. No, thank you. Which brings me to this other post that came out recently by Gary V where he said feedback is important but understand that 99.9% .9 of the people that leave feedback or judge you don't have all the context. This is so tricky for me because I we want feedback and we want to be open and we don't want to be overly confident but we also have to remember that the stuff people are leaving comments about especially the people that are so confident they just don't know and it's not their fault. It's a very natural thing. I mean, I've done it. You're not like paying attention to what the other person, how they would hear it. You know, that there's actually another person on the other side of that screen. In his uh, little comment, he said, don't get frustrated or take to heart all these people's feedback. Be empathetic to the fact that they don't really know you. The reason hate and trolling doesn't upset me is because I know they don't know me 100% and they don't have all the context. I don't hate them back or get mad at them. I understand them. If I'm putting myself out there, it comes to the territory. Yeah. 
So I want to contrast that with another comment that's made. She says, screw those sheltered, cowardly people who called CPS. I wish my parents had done such a kick-ass adventure with me when I was younger. Instead, I was stuck indoors most days watching crap television and eating junk food. Same here. <laughs> you two didn't force anything wrong on your children. They got an unbelievable, an unbelievably wonderful life experience with their whole family. What a beautiful experience for you all. I applaud you parents for doing it. Oh, I forgot to add, think about the pioneers in the old days that had to travel through horrible conditions with their families. Everyone thinks those stories are awesome, yet they look down on parents who through hike with their children today when there are much more accommodations. You guys were having fun and growing stronger. At least your kids were fed, properly clothed and sheltered and they had fun too. Angie, um, I think is like really trying to be encouraging and have our back and I really appreciate that. So thank you, Angie, for the kind comment. One thing I'm a little bit leery of though is I think it's really easy to be very black or white on either, either, side. either side. Yeah, and we can say, oh, you guys are a bunch of neglectful assholes for doing this or it's easy to turn us into heroes and be like, you guys are so awesome. You're the greatest family ever. That's so cool. You did everything right and everyone, no one understands you. And I actually think that's just as dangerous. I think humans are more complicated than that. I think we're more complicated than that. Both are judgments, actually. Yeah. One's just a negative judgment and the other is a positive one. And the fact of the matter is our trip had a lot of cool things about it. And it had a lot of not cool things about it. And there was times when Cammie and I were heroes and we really uh, shined, shone, shined. And there was times where we were basically like villains and just like you are at home, just like we're at home where, you know, I lost my temper and I like didn't care and I was just thinking about myself and I wasn't doing what was in my children's best interests or even my own sometimes. It's just like mixed. Yeah. And the reason why this is so important to me is because I, I don't really care about proving it to you guys, but especially to my kids, if I take all the positive feedback of the trail, um, which on the trail, honestly, we had to focus on the positive feedback and not the negative because the negative just wasn't helpful to us. Like I'm fine with asking we questions. We were in a pretty vulnerable state the whole time we were doing the trail because it was super tough. Um, so yeah, we but had we had decided we had already decided going. to commit to doing it So if people are just like you guys suck, you should not be doing this. That's not gonna help us But when it's done I think it would be really wrong just if the kids are complaining and saying hey This was hard for me to be like yeah, well the trail was awesome and we're good parents and You're lucky that you had food <laughs> Someday you'll understand. I don't value your opinion now or something. Yeah, yeah. And I just think it's so much better for us to look at it as mixed and to be able to be proud of the areas that we would replicate and then the areas that we maybe made mistakes or are not proud of that we would apologize to our kids and say, hey, like, we did the best we can. Like, I don't know if I'd say that to my kid. I'd probably say that to myself because I don't think it's very helpful to say that to a child who's hurting. But to just ask for forgiveness and be like, you know, I wish I would have done this differently. I'm sorry if that hurts you and leave it at that. And there was a lot of things for the trail uh, that that was a part of our success, was working through the negativity in um, of the day-to-day -day and of our, our character and of our bad decisions at times. I mean, it's 161 days, you guys. It's five months and nine days of decision-making. Like, there was good and there was bad decisions. Overall, I think it was awesome because I think families are awesome and I think difficult things make families shine. So when people saw it, I think they were like, whoa, that is so cool. But it, you know, it wasn't having to just do with us. I think it showed off family. Uh, that's not the point of this video, but. So, I don't yeah. know, anything else you wanna say? Mm. At the end of the day, I appreciate all honest feedback. Um, yeah. I guess, you know, the first comment seemed a little judgmental to me and I feel like that's an error that we are prone to anytime we try and act like we fully understand another human being. 
on both sides. And that's, that, that actually happened on both sides. That can easily happen when it triggers an emotion inside of you that actually more has to do with you than the person you're usually commenting. I mean, this is, I'm saying this to myself, like if I like get really upset, um, and I'm maybe assuming that person was kind of emotionally upset, like watching this video of ours, it is very easy to get into that mode of like snap judgment, you know? Um, so actually in responding to these comments, your guys' comments, um, I've learned anytime a comment like really pisses me off, it's probably not a good idea to respond in that moment because it's, I usually, if I do do that, and then two hours later or a day later, I go back and read my comment, I'm like, ooh, yeah, I, I wish I wouldn't have said that because I actually feel differently now. I, may, I might still be like, still have an opinion that's like a different than that person but i just always have more grace when i walk away and then come back and i'm less like charged i always have almost always i think have more grace for that person and yeah. even for myself so well i think we've learned in counseling like with each other that when there's a problem it's easier for me to focus on cammy like cammy's the problem and she yeah. thinks ben's the problem and we've learned this language of like, no, the problem's the problem. It's not, mm -hmm. she's not the enemy. And I think even with commenters that we don't agree with, you know, I'd like to think that both those people are, are wanting the world to be a better place. And maybe, I don't know if they care about us, but maybe the first commenter cared about our child and was concerned, you know, and we don't always know the best way to express that or the most helpful, but you know, there's good aspects. There's truths in both those things if we can see them. And maybe there's incompleteness also, but that's okay. Um, but it's easy to feel like, oh, they're saying I'm the problem and therefore they're the problem. So let's just attack them. Where it's like, no, I'd like to bring light into this scenario, more light if we can and and help people understand context. And if they, they can still believe what they want, that's okay. So we appreciate your comments. Yeah. So leave a comment below. <laughs> Even the judgmentally <laughs> <laughs> we are uh, resting now, and this is where we take uh, a full day off from looking at comments, basically. Try to. Because we need that. We need our minds and our hearts and our bodies need to rest from all the things we try to do in the other six days of the week that very naturally to try to define who we are. Um, but what we want to define who we are is we want to believe that we're good enough, just as we are, how we're made, good enough for however, what, what we produce, what we don't produce, doesn't, we're not defined by that um, because we're just, we're good enough, we believe in God's eyes and that he just flat out loves and cares for us. So this day is a day of remembrance of that for us, that we need every single week because it's very easy to forget. I don't want to kiss you. Oh. Kisses have been hard to come by with the beard and mustache scenario that's going on right, All right now. All coming in. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys on Monday. Shabbat, Shabbat shalom. shalom.